Hello friends and welcome at my channel. One more new function. f of x equals to 4x minus 12 divided over x minus 2 squared. Let's go. So what we are not allowed to have is x value to be equal to 2. So it's excluded. Number 2, what about symmetry? So let's compute f of minus x. It's just 4 times minus x minus 12 divided over minus x minus 2 squared. We got minus 4x minus 12 divided over. Now, let's see what's happening. I mean, I can take minus 1 out here. That would be x plus 2, and then we square the whole stuff. As you can see, we are going to have minus 4x plus 12 divided over x plus 2 squared. It's kind of hard to have any kind of symmetry here. So obviously we're not equal to minus f of x because of the denominator. Um, and we cannot be equal to... Um, and those two results are not equal neither. So no symmetry. No symmetry is given. All right, number three. Well, as you can see, obviously, towards plus infinity, we have a positive, huge positive value in the numerator, but even bigger, greater value in the denominator. So the denominator develops faster, and that's why we have zero. And uh, the same stuff is also happening here. It is also zero. Next. Uh, if we're considering two, limit x towards two. 4x minus 12, x minus two squared. Now you see it doesn't matter whether I'm coming from plus or minus infinity, right? Uh, from from uh, sorry from positive or from negative side, so we could write plus or we could write minus at the same time. So because of this squared uh, value in the denominator, those are going to be the same outcomes. So the denominator in this case is a very small positive number. The numerator is for sure negative. So in both cases, we are going to run against minus infinity. All right, number four, 4x minus 12 is going to be zero if and only if x is equal to three. Number five, extreme values, f prime of x. This is equal to four times x minus two squared minus 4x minus 12 times two times x minus two, and the inner derivative would be one in this case, divided over x minus 2 to the power of 4. I'm taking x minus 2 out of the parentheses. I'm going to get 4 times x minus 2 here. This one is gone. We just have minus 2 times 4x minus 12. Am I right? Seems to be right. Divided over x minus 2 cubed times one more, x minus two. We're canceling those two, and we are going to have the following numerator, which is 4x minus eight, minus eight x plus 24. Always pray not to make any kind of computing mistakes here. It's always bad and embarrassing at the same time. So 4x minus 8x would be minus 4x and minus 8 plus 24 is equal to 16 divided over x minus 2 cubed. Can we simplify something? No, we cannot. So this is the first derivative. Let's, let me put it in the, on the next page. So f prime of x is equal to minus 4x plus 16 divided over x minus 2 cubed. Am I right? Let's see. Seems to be all right. Okay. 
let us figure out the zero points of the first derivative. Obviously, it is the case if x is equal to 4. Second derivative test. Minus 4 times x minus 2 cubed minus minus 4x plus 16 times 3 times x minus 2 squared times 1. If you want to write it down this way. And then x minus 2 to the power of 6. Now, once again, the application of the quotient rule. We're going to take out x minus 2 squared. We're having minus 4x minus 2. Now, x minus 2 squared is gone. 3 is remaining. Let's keep it simple. Let's write it minus 3 times minus 4x plus 16. Let's close the parentheses. Let's write here x minus 2 squared times x minus 2 to the power of 4. Cancel, cancel. And let's once again compute and simplify the numerator which is bringing us minus 4x plus 8 plus 12x minus 48 divided over x minus 2 to the power of 4. 12x minus 4x is 8x. 8 minus 48 is minus 40 divided over x minus 2 to the power of 4. All right. So what is the second derivative at 4? That would be 32 minus 4 divided over 4 minus 2, which is 2 to the power of 16, uh, 4, uh, it's 16. So we got minus 8 divided by 16. It's minus a half. It's less than 0. So afterwards, uh, to the left or to the right hand, uh, hand sides, to both sides, we're going to, get, uh, to have a decreasing function, decreasing um, um, a decreasing slope, so we're going to have a max. And the x value is 4. What about the y value? For these reasons, we need to put 4 into the original function, which was, I think, 4x minus 12. 4 times 4 minus 12 divided over 4 minus 2. squared. So it's 16 minus 12, which is 4, and we are dividing 4, and we are dividing it by 2 squared, which is also 4, so it's 1. At 4, 1, we got max. Okay, let us consider the second derivative, which is 8x minus 40, and that would be step 6, by the way, uh, divided over x minus 2 to the power of 4. This is step 6. And this is the second derivative. We would like to figure out uh, for which values of x that becomes 0. Obviously, it's equal to 5. And, you know, previously in all the results, I was always computing the further derivatives. Let us do it different here, okay? I need some entertainment as well, not only you guys. So what's happening if we're having the second derivative at uh, 5.1, let's say? So this is 8 times 5.1 minus 40 divided over 5.1 minus 2 to the power of 4. So basically we're having a big number in the numerator. All the times we're having a positive number in this case for the denominator. So this is positive. All right. And what's happening if we're computing the second derivative at 4.9? So we're going to have 8 times 4.9 minus 40 divided over 4.9 minus 2 to the power of 4. So this is a value which is slightly less than 40. So this is de uh, negative. The denominator is positive. So we are having a negative number. So there is a change of sign. And that means for the slope of f of x, which is being computed by f prime of x, we have, well, an extreme value. Um, let us see. We are decreasing before and we are increasing after. So it would be the value with the minimum of the curvature, something like this. So we have the point of inflection, point 
of inflection with the x value of 5 and we can compute f of 5 in order to find the y value which is 4 times 5 minus 12 divided over 5 minus 2 squared. Let me check it again. That seems to be right. So 20 minus 12 is 8 divided over 9. So 8 divided by 9 is here. All right. Can we plot the graph? Let's do it. Number 7, plotting the graph. Okay, so first of all, we have a trouble at 2, right? In both cases of this trouble, we are going to get 2, as I remember, minus infinity. Am I right? Okay. I have a 0 point at 3. I'm just gathering all the information, right? Okay. I have a max, if I remember it correctly, at 4, 1 which fits well, 4, 1. I have a point of inflection at 5 and 8 divided by 9, so somewhere here. Then, well, you see, if you don't have enough points, you can say, well, this is the function. What is actually f of 0? That's minus 12. Um, u divided by minus 2 squared, which is 4, so it's minus 3. So at 0, you have the value of minus 3. 1, 2, 3, somewhere there. All right, just, just to know what's happening. Okay, so we are going to get to 0. We know that. We're having no max or no mean, whatever here. So this is how it's supposed to be looking like. Then we are coming from here. We're going up to the max, let me draw it with the finger, to the max, to the zero point. Now here we got the point of inflection, so from that point on we're changing our curvature and we are trying to get to x. Uh, slightly better. There you go. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.